Bossus and Philemon, 1, by Jonathan Swift on the ever-lamented loss of the two yew trees in the parish of Chilthorne, Somerset. 1706. Imitated from the Eighth Book of Ovid in ancient times, as story tells, the saints would often leave their cells, and stroll about, but hide their quality, to try good people's hospitality. It happened on a winter night, as authors of the legend write, two brother hermits, saints by trade, taking their tour in masquerade, disguised in tattered habits, went to a small village down in Kent, where, in the stroller's canting strain, they begged from door to door in vain, treat every tone might pity win, but not a soul would let them in. Our wandering saints, in waffle state, treated at this ungodly rate, having throw, all the village passed, to a small cottage came at last where dwelt a good old honest Yaman, called in the neighborhood Philemon, who kindly did these saints invite in his poor hut to pass the night, and then the hospitable sire bid goody bosses mend the fire, while he from out the chimney took a flitch of bacon off the hook, and freely from the fattest side cut out large slices to be freed, then stepped aside to fetch him drink, filled a large jug up to the brink, and saw it fairly twice go round. Yet, what was wonderful, they found twas still replenished to the top, as if they ne'er had touched a drop. The good old couple were amazed, and often on each other gazied, for both were frightened to the heart, and just began to cry, what art? Then softly turned aside, to view whether the lights were burning blue. The gentle pilgrims, soon aware on't, told them their calling and their errand. Good folk, you need not be afraid, we are but saints, the hermits said. No hurt shall come to you or yours, but for that pack of churlish boors, not fit to live on Christian ground, they and their houses shall be drowned, while you shall see your cottage rise, and grow a church before your eyes. They scarce had spoke, when fair and soft, the roof began to mount aloft. Aloft rose every beam and rafter. The heavy wall climbed slowly after. The chimney widened, and grew higher became a steeple with a spire. The kettle to the top was hoist, and there stood fastened to a joist, but with the upside down, to show its inclination for below. In vain. For a superior force applied at bottom stops its course. Doomed ever in. Suspense to dwell. Tis now no kettle, but a bell. A wooden jack, which had almost lost by disuse the art to roast. A sudden alteration feels, increased by new intestine wheels, and, what exalts the wonder more, the number made the motion slower. The flyer, though it had leaden feet, turned round so quick you scarce could seat, but, slackened by some secret power, now hardly moves an inch an hour. The jack and chimney, near Ollied, had never left each other's side, the chimney to a steeple grown, the jack would not be left alone, but, up against the steeple reared, became a clock, and still adiatured and still its love to household cares, by a shrill voice at noon, declares, warning the cookmaid not to burn that roast meat, which it cannot turn. The groaning chair began to crawl, like an huge snail, half up the wall. There stuck aloft in public view, and with small change, a pulpit grew. The porringers, that in a row hung high, and made a glittering show, to a less noble substance changed, were now but leathern buckets ranged. The ballads, pasted on the wall, of Joan, two, of France, an English mall, three, fair Rosamond, and Robin Hood, the little children in the wood, now seem to look abundance better, improved in picture, size, and letter, and, high in order plaqued, describe the heraldry of every tribe, four, a bedstead of the, antique mode, compact of timber many a load, such as our ancestors did use, was metamorphosed into pews, which still their ancient nature keep by lodging folk disposed to sleep. The cottage, by such feats as these, grown to a church by just degrees, the hermits then desired their host to ask for what he fancied most. Philemon, having paused a while, returned them thanks in homely style, then said, My house is grown so fine, methinks, I still would call it mine. I'm old, and fain would live at ease, make me the parson if you please. He spoke, and presently he feels his grazier's coat fall down his heels. He sees, yet hardly can believe, about each arm a pudding. Sleeve. His waistcoat to a cassock grew, and both assumed a sable hue. But, being old, continued just as threadbare, and is full of dust. His talk was now of tithes and dues, could smoke his pipe, and read the news. Knew how to preach old sermons next, vamped in the preface and the text. At christenings well could act his part, and had. The service all by heart. Wished women might have children fast, and thought who sow had pharaohed last, against dissenters would repine, and stood up firm for, right divine, found his head filled with many a system, 
but classic authors, he ne'er missed them. Thus having furbished up a parson, Dame Bossus next they played their farce on. Instead of homespun quaffs, were seen good pinners edged with colbertine. Her petticoat, transformed apace, became black satin, flounced with lace. Plain goody, would no longer down, twas, madam, in her grogram gown. Philemon was in great surprise, and hardly could believe his eyes. Amazed to see her look so prim, and she admired as much at him. Thus happy in their change of life, were several years this man and wife, when on a day, which proved their last, discoursing o'er old stories past, they went by chance, amidst their talk, five, to the churchyard to take a walk. When Bossus hastily cried out, My dear, I see your forehead sprout. Sprout. Quoth the man, What's this? You tell us? I hope you don't believe me jealous. But yet, methinks, I feel it true, and really yours is budding too. Nay, now I cannot stir my foot, it feels as if twere taking root. Description would but tire my muse, in short, they both were turned to use. Old Goodman Dobson of the Green remembers he the trees has seen. He'll talk of them from noon till night, and goes with folk to show the sight. On Sundays, after evening prayer, he gathers all the parish there. Points out the place of either you, here bosses, there Philemon, grew. Till once a parson of our town, to mend his barn, cut bosses down. At which, tis hard to be believed how much the other tree was grieved, grew scrubby, died a top, was stunted, so the next parson stubbed and burnt it.